gonna get on down. Have you ever seen The Wiz? <laughs> the Wiz? Do you know there's a Wizard of Oz version with Michael Jackson playing Dorothy? Yeah, I've heard of that. You've never seen it, though? I've never seen it, though, no. You've never seen it? I always assumed it wasn't. Oh, my God. There's not, it's not an actual movie. Hold on. Ah, here we are. Oh, I thought we were live. Dang it. Well, we were kind of caught in mid-conversation, guys. We were, um... <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, how are you feeling? You know what? Not bad, actually. Working on a bunch of different stuff, which is good and bad at the same time, and feeling like a million pieces are... I, yeah. Right. Feeling like a million pieces are moving at once. Yeah, that, you know what, that describes it. I was trying to find the right words, and yeah, no, it is it is like a million pieces moving at once. There are some pieces that aren't moving that... It's very, like, it's very exhilarating, but also, like, calm at the same time. Like, I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to keep myself calm and try and keep myself... I'm, I'm, very, I'm in a pretty good place right now, but... I'm, I'm trying, trying to stay present in the moment. Yeah. The, yeah I mean, we're working on it. a bunch of projects at the moment. But that's kind of, that was always the plan. That we were just, what we were talking about was the idea that our creative thought on why a studio would be a nonprofit organization mm. is it's a springboard for mm. creators. It's a place where you let people feel accepted enough to bring out what they have and then mm. give it. And I don't picture, and then, oh, and then they hang around the studio for the rest of their life. Yeah. I picture, you know what, no, we do record music. Well, what, we were, what we, we were talking about was, a good amount of it was, hey, we want to get to a place where this is such a big thing that we can make it a piece of our lives. And it's like, every, if, if, if a good amount of people have it as a piece of their lives, whether it's like you watch as a fan or you participate with us as a creator, like... We want to make something that is is a, a bright spot in someone's life. Yeah, the the idea, right? Exactly. Yeah. That something to look forward to. Well, and we we hugely found in our life because we've lived lives. I think we've been we've around been a bit. Se well, seen some things. Yeah. Uh, and without you know, I mean, that we've had you know, um, that. Having it feel like you're part of a community and not alone in mm -hmm. those things. That's why we're so open. That's why it's the, the show about not putting on a show. <laughs> and, you know, all of that. All of the, the mumbo jumbo that I, I feel around here and there. And I mean, I know I get very poetic mm -hmm. from time to time. You know, that I get lost in my thoughts, if you will. Point. Well, we collectively have lived like. 68 years even though like most of that was concurrent but you know um <laughs> well, only 18 of it actually 18 of it yeah most of it was not actually no I, I actually that's a good most, point that's a good i had to carry most of the weight on your 68 year theory yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i got uh, 32 years of weight had, around <laughs> 32 years well yeah is that i was 32 when you were born so you're probably two years older than my mom she was 30 no 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 she was never mind it the ages are yeah <laughs> Hold on, keep going. I want an I was trying. I was trying to make. I was, I was, I was trying to work out the math in my I head. No, it, it was. It was. It was painful to watch. I was trying to work out the math. There was an abacus. There was a. There was, uh, there was a small hamster on a wheel trying to power the abacus in your head. They, yeah, some I'm parts of sure my brain all. just turned off sometimes. That's what that is. Ross is pointing out that I'm older than his mother. Yeah. I'm pointing out that my voice is going. <laughs> that part of the reality. And, and I drink water all the time. I'm going to start to switch to tea or something. Something. Yeah, tea, tea will do okay. you right. So my voice is going on. We did a short show in the morning, a half hour. Lazy bastard that I am. <laughs> um, well, because we were doing a show zero again, kind of trying to update where we were at. Yeah, trying to reset a little bit. Well, yeah, there's a little reset. Uh, then we got a little overwhelmed. Yeah. There was a bit of a, a ruckus. No fisticuffs. No fisticuffs. Yeah, no. But there was perhaps some. There was some tension. There was a little bit of tension, but that's the. But we brought it here. Yeah. That if you catch last week's show where we finally deal with it, it's an amazing show. That you, that we that the, the the conversation is about how do we not like. How do we not do that again? Well, it's easy for <laughs> us to get in our heads to put on. Some kind of show. Well, what I've what I've noticed with poetry, 
It's that when I, on occasion, I'll like write, I'll sit down and write poetry. Uh-huh. And like, it's different than like writing a song because I literally don't have to worry about, is this the best line to use for this? Or does this rhyme with this? I'm kind of just like, okay, what do I want to say right now? Well, and my goal is that what happens is we use that same kind of energy yeah. here. And so that you're right when you're... It's kind of like a what do I want to say right now type thing. Yeah, yeah. Bring it, bringing you forward. Yeah. I always thought of poetry that way, that it's, it's, which is why there's so much really sappy poetry. Not all poetry is <laughs> sappy, for the record. Um, soon we're going to have a project called Hayes Audio Library up on Spotify and other places where you can find podcasts, mm. where I will be you know, going through and reading in some of its poetry. Some of it's just very poetic literature. We should, we should do one stream where I just like try to make a happy song that just goes on for a week. It's nothing Whoa. but sad songs. Oh, jeez. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's not that infrequent. I promise we are going to It's gonna pretty act, frequent. I know it's scary, but Ross will be producing his own music show soon. It's pretty frequent. And we don't know what's going to happen. We it's a know. scary, scary thing. We don't know. For those of us that... No, it's not scary. I'll sit over here and hold your hand, I promise. <laughs> if you I... That's so sappy. Well, but to some extent, I'm going to come in and kind of host a little bit so you can do more of... you, So you can relax into your music. Mm-hmm. Um, because we really want to bring that to everybody because I think that's it's poetry that if you go through my my book uh, the pink pages mm-hmm. Zen and the Art of Madness did that, you write did you put poems in there too oh there's there's yeah there's all kind there's I've always been drawn to kind of haikus okay. there's always short I've always rhymed a lot okay without a you know it just kind of kind I don't of know if it's you. that I was raised on Dr. Seuss <laughs> not really that I, I I think not enough rappers give credit to Dr. Seuss. That in the end, I mean, you think of the poetic stylings of Eminem or, you know, Kendrick Lamar, and you compare them to Dr. Seuss, it's hard to not admit that I think... in some ways, in a house with a mouse. I think that when I look at Dr. Seuss, he's one of the very few poets I know that most people have like read. How about Shel Silverstein? Of. I, I know of her too. Yeah, she's, yeah. And I, I I know that I have a feeling that there's. A lot I want of you to know, Shell, that I know you're a man, and that I respect you. Dang, I thought, I it, was could a, check. I thought it was a lady. The the coolest part about Shell really Silverstein is he started off. He was noticed by Hugh what Hefner, he and began. He did the the comp, the cartoons in Playboy. But then. Okay. He did. All kinds of I thought, crazy poetry. I thought Does he Jill do a giving tree? did something with uh, Frankenstein for some reason. I love you. We're going to uh, change the subject. Shell, I know you're a man. Some things I don't know. You know what? I don't know anything. So, the thing that made me think about poetry was, A, you were over there rhyming and just enjoying the pleasure of it. Mm. It's a funny thing. When poetry hits you right, it's like, deep, 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 deep. I mean, I, and I think, but the weird part is everybody's drawn to, like, different, I think everybody could find poems that either make them laugh or cry. Yeah. Feel something. If you look hard enough, there's, there's, there's poems. I, I think there's poems out there for anybody. Well, I, I think so. I like to think of all things as poetry. Mm-hmm. All things are meditation. All things are poetry. <laughs> wow. And now that everything's connected, mm-hmm. that in the sense of trying to use some form or medium mm-hmm. to cause feeling in somebody else. Mm. Well, there's there's definitely a lot of connection in trying to relate to the reader and trying to entertain. Like, well, it depends on right. The style. Yeah, it depends. It, de- it definitely depends on what you're doing. But like, there's obviously a lot of overlap with okay, I want to make you laugh. I want to make you feel this certain thing. Or I'm feeling this certain thing, and I want to put this out there just in case anybody else is feeling this certain thing. Well, I I love the idea of the written word, the spoken word, as much as a medium Mm -hmm. as any of the other artistic mediums. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm really accepting of just about anything as art. It's expression. You know what? In the end, yes, Yoko, it's music. But (laughs) you know what? The... You almost sounded like your laugh again. Really? Go. Oh, she doesn't. No. She's on the phone again. 
No. Kill I She said that one of the things she noticed is, is that the rhyming in her songs is often missed. Like, Did you hear it rhymed three it's times? Like she nails said nails on a chalkboard. Well, I think that that's what she's going for. Is that Yoko? No. Is that no. your? We're not talking to Yoko. I'm hanging up. I'm hanging up. You're hanging. Yes. I'm pressing the button. You're hanging up on Yoko. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm so proud of the fact that Yoko Duo calls here so often. Mm. It's not Yoko Ono, it's Yoko Duo. Yoko. Yoko Ono versus Yoko Duo. Well, yeah, the second. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not like if, if you get down, like if you're playing a game and you have five Yokos mm -hmm. and you get down to one Yoko, you have to yell out, Oh no! And then you win. <laughs> Right? Isn't that how the game's played? <laughs> I've got okay, Yoko you Duo. Just mix, like, you just mix, like, sorry with Uno. I don't... I, and it's not to it, me. When you play Uno, isn't it when you get to the last one, you scream out Uno? Yeah. He's, yeah. He said, yeah, Uno, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. It's Uno. Shouts out to Yoko Duo. Thanks for stopping in today. Um... But I think her point is valid, that sometimes poetry doesn't have to rhyme. That as much as I love Seuss, there's, oh God, I wish I, I'm awful for preparing for shows. Do you remember the young, name of the young lady that spoke at Biden's inauguration? I want to say Leah something. I don't think it is, but okay. The reality is that I have such respect for the use of prose, both just in all its forms, whether it be I don't need a bus, I need bullets. That's, but it's beautiful, listen to it. I don't need a bus, I need bullets. It's just dead on. No, I, I definitely like, I love, I, lo <laughs> I love like comebacks and witty like retorts. And Whoa. like, I love, I love this. Like, I'm telling you, there was, there was this, there was this thing where the Persians sent a message to the Spartans and they were like, they were like, if you don't let us in, we're gonna come and take all your stuff and we're gonna kill everybody and blah, 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 right? So let me tell you what the Spartans responded with. If, I, I kid you not, all they said was if. And I'm like, I, I, can't, I can't invade you after you just said that. Like, like. Well, okay, so here's, I, I've come up with, so I've decided that to up the game of the poetic nature of the communication globally, that as much as we've tried Mm -hmm. um, former movie stars and we've tried failed reality stars mm -hmm. I think that if we can learn anything from the Russo-Ukrainian conflict Russo? Russo? Russian, Canadian Canadian <laughs> <laughs> they're after the bacon and the maple syrup that, it would be weird it's mostly empty up there they could land and like yeah, camp for a long time yeah, they could. and then they'd leave like haha -ha, and the Canadians would be like was there somebody up there <laughs> must have been somebody up there must have been eh? the, uh, the what the do you, what do you call it yeah there, there you go there you go DJs from up country DJs from up country up country but <laughs> the, I think what we learn is let's normalize electing comedians Electing comedians. I want people that just call shit out. Yeah. Do you follow me? That I'm, I'm telling you, I would elect the ticket of Stuart Seinfeld. Stuart oh. Seinfeld. John Stewart and Larry David. Larry David is vice president. So Larry David's like just complaining constantly about crap. Like, oh, you know what? It's just stupid. Like calling out how stupid the way crap's going. Yeah. And I mean, John, and John Stewart's like, we can fix this. We can. Can I right get? Here. Okay, wait a minute. So now we went Larry David. Who is the who other? Who to call? Who? Who else was I going to say a minute ago? I said John. You said you said Seinfeld earlier. Yeah, I want Seinfeld to be our Secretary of State. <laughs> I want him to pick. I want when world leaders come to our country, he picks a really cool car that he that it rem, that the world leader reminds him of, and they just kind of drive around D.C. and get coffee. <laughs> that, that, I'll watch that show. 
<laughs> and think of the way, you see what I'm saying? No, we talked about a little bit of, you know, you know what? what, you get, oh. Okay, so Linsky has to do comedians in cars getting coffee. When, when this, this all gets calmed down, I need the president of the Ukraine over here I'll, in a car I'll with be Seinfeld. Honest, I'll be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if Seinfeld's already like picked up on, I need to set that up. I need to set that up. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if that's in Seinfeld's If you're wondering, like, as he was going, man, I need coffee today, so the thought was, you know, I should get coffee it'd with so, Zelensky. It'd be so funny if we watched this episode. Have you ever noticed that when you get coffee, he called it. You, you want to have it with Zelensky. <laughs> that's funny. Not really. I didn't do a very good impression. It wasn't very funny. Actually. I can't. I can't. I can't do Seinfeld. I need to watch it. I can't. I can't just off the cuff. Well, but my point is, life in general needs to be a little more poetic. Mm -hmm. That if we stop and see the poetry in everyday motion, it like becomes more joyful to be here. Mm. That okay. So we all kind of experience this thing where. There's this crazy Ukrainian just saying, no, screw you. And mm -hmm. he's got really great, like he's, he knows how to do this and he uses really cool descriptive screw yous. Mm -hmm. But it's not blithering. It's not written for him. It's that it, he has, you know what it is? He has a sharp mind, but it's also a compassionate mind. And I like, like, I don't, I'm not saying Putin doesn't have a sharp mind, but it's like a very dark his perception of the world is based on his experience, and it's just very... I don't know. I, he's projecting that everybody's out to get him. I think, I think that people... Nobody, hey, for, for the record, Vladimir, nobody cares about you. This could be... This we could all know this is your war, and we think you're a piece of crap. Go ahead. This could be a stereotype of poets or something. Um, but I always wonder, like, are poets just, like, really, really good at, like, fantasizing but they found a productive way to like fantasize like they just write so, it down well, so write extent. down what they're fantasizing and what they're but a lot of times it's not fantasizing some thinking. of the best poetry and some of the best rap is more from the heart and about them well i don't mean i don't mean like the, yeah, the exp it, i think of it as more as discovering an outlet as opposed to oh we all that i think to some extent we all love a creative outlet. And creative can come in a million different ways. It may be how you figure out how to do, I don't know, whatever you do for work. But if it feels creative, and I think the fulfilling part is often whether or not something feels creative. Mm -hmm. You know, that... Well, I, I, think, I, think, I think it's, it's almost poetry. If, if something feels different. And I think for some people it can be hard to find those with like the traditional, I don't know, jobs and stuff. The very day in, day out, doing the same thing. Well, not really. I, I, I try, try to give the idea that it could be anyone's experience. Yeah, exactly. I don't you know, like. I, yeah, I look so at I, I look know. at people. I look at people who who are going to work every day, and I, a good, I've seen a good amount of people that go to work every day that are happy with their lives and they're they feel fulfilled. And okay. So I look at that and I'm like, okay, so maybe some people find. Um, creativity in ways that I don't. You know, like maybe some. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Like, wow. Um, so maybe maybe some people go into the day and they're an accountant and they're they're doing accounting things. But I don't know. Maybe they find creativity somewhere in their day and in, in well, no, work. I, 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 and they find I fun people, and joy in that. I know people that the noodling on numbers is fun for them. Yeah, I know people that are scientists that that is a creative thing for them. They're yeah. discovering. Yeah, and so it's their I, own creative outlet. So sometimes when I say sometimes when I say creative, I, I I definitely like my definition of creative is is a little broad because I think almost anything can be a creative experience. Well, I I so I link creativity, meditation, poetry. I have a very Renaissance outlook on how. I find words very defining, and what I find over time is many of the things are describing the same thing. And so I go, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is where you find that centered moment where you're in your space existing, and then stuff comes out. Well, I almost look at it like this definition is this piece of this, and this piece of this, and this piece of this, all coagulated together. It's different pieces from a whole pie to get a new pie. And this is the definition of this. 
Right. And it's almost like sometimes it can get very confusing when I'm speaking words in conversations <laughs> because like the definition of something will just change on me in the middle of my head and just it'll switch and I'm like, oh, so that's different. Okay. That changes how I think about things. Well, right. The poetry is different now. You know, it's, but it's okay. It's, 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 it's beautiful in its own way. Well, and that's that everything is organic. Mm -hmm. That I, so I, I've, I've thought a lot lately about the organic major nature of like thought. Mm -hmm. So that in the sense of if I'm not attached to what I'm saying, mm -hmm. if once it leaves me, it's gone. Right. The next point is it's organically consumed by all other things and turned into their perception. The second it leaves me, it's not the same. So it's okay. To, I, I've gotten into a really weird headspace meditation-wise. Yeah, it's all poetry. They're talking about empty cups, full cups. Oh, empty your cup so you can receive, fill your cup with the new knowledge or whatever, depending on which sect. And for me anymore, it's a cup with no bottom and it flows through and out and it's just seats and I don't know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Just doing the best I can, you know what I'm saying? It's actually kind of strange that I didn't really like poetry as a kid. Cause I, I, I like, I Did like- Did you like Dr. Seuss? I like to listen to a story, but I didn't really like poetry. Did you like Dr. Seuss? Do you remember Dr. Seuss as a kid I or not? Yeah. I mean, I, I, stopped, I think I probably stopped reading Dr. Seuss kind of early. But what I'm saying is, it's got rhyme, it's got rhythm. I got you. I'm saying. I mean, it's halfway to be a, to being a Jamaican bobsledding team. I'm saying, like, when I was a kid, it was, I was always more interested in a story and predicting where is this story gonna go? Because mm, every yeah, okay. every every time I would read in class, we'd read up to this point and we'd always talk about, okay, where do you guys think the story is gonna go? And kind of learning how a story flows right. and comprehending what's going on. And I guess, I guess that's, that's why, why, I guess that's why when I watch movies, I'm always like questioning things and I'm just kind of thinking out loud. <laughs> like every time I watch a movie, I'm literally thinking like, where's it gonna go? And he's so quiet when he watches them alone, but he has so many questions. When well, else well, problems. I'm getting, I'm getting better at it. I'll be honest. I'm probably just gonna. No, no, no! Don't feel that way. Well, no, it's. No, it's, no, it's oh, look, shoot, I'm sorry. Look, I don't. I really like don't this. want you to feel it's that like way. This. See, we could be a Canadian show watching watch them. When I watch them, when I. <laughs> I just apologize. That's funny. Um, when I watch. Oh, I forgot. If you if you hear a show in Canada, part of it has to be. Designed for the French, so, and I surrender. Oh my God, French people are gonna be like, no, this is not. I'm not gonna do that. Ukrainian French people? Where were those people from that you just had in your head? I, I had more of an accent coming, but I was like, I was like, tone that down all the way. Anyway, when I watch movies, I'm always thinking about where it's gonna go next. And I guess I've always been so interested in the storytelling piece that I didn't really think about the, the description and, and the, the, the the going into it and just slowly coming along to, oh, this is where we're at. The, the funny thing, thing is, though, you, you write know? music that way. Your music has a story. I mean, yeah, there's a hook, but you write poetry. Well, I try, I try to keep a story going. It's, it's well, but I mean, the, the funny, funny thing, thing is, is yeah. as, as we're, we're discussing, discussing poetry with a guy that... One of his major interests is really literally writing poetry at this point, but you don't at call this it point, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At you this don't point, call it that. No, I'm saying, I'm saying it's interesting that I didn't really have interest in this when I was a kid. Right. No, no, I had that's more, what I'm, I'm having that same. I had more interest in telling a story as opposed to, I didn't, I didn't even realize like that there was any value in the whole getting into a description and actually looking at this thing for what it is and trying to figure out what, what is this bowl that I have here? So you know? I hated Shakespeare. Uh -huh. And so the way my brother explained Shakespeare to me was that it was, um, it was rap, um, <laughs> middle ages. It was middle age rap. <laughs> middle age rap. That, I mean, what you gotta do is read it and go, oh, okay, boop, 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 boop. Yeah. I mean, just got really big. Yeah, I'll ages. be honest, Shakespeare was confusing for me. I, I, you know what, I love yeah. the stories. It was so, I could kind of understand what was going on in the stories, but I was like, dude, why are you, I don't, I, I, I just couldn't get it. I couldn't get it. Alas, poor Yorick. <laughs> I knew him well. 
<laughs> right? I'm like, why are you using you so this, many you words? You did a speech with a skull right here. I've given that speech. I don't remember all of it before. Well, I had to memorize a speech that I chose that one. I almost think of poetry like taking the minutia of life and, and expanding on it. Just looking at it. Like inspecting, inspecting things. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think similar, like, it, but it could be inspecting big things, little things. Yeah, it could be. I mean, haiku is trying to look at things from a different perspective. A basic haiku is three lines and it just defines a perspective a lot of times. Trying to look at things from a different perspective, maybe. Sitting on the leaf, tasting of the rain, mm -hmm. peaceful serenity. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the I don't know if I got that's that's like a really loose haiku, but that's it. That's the whole thing. That's the whole poem. Yeah. Where like they're very zen. They're very yeah. just like. Da -dum, da -dum. But po the coolest thing is poetry really is. It's weird how we draw such a. Uh, this is literature. This is poetry. Mm. And a lot of it has to do with where you put the punctuation and the capitalizations. I'll be honest. Yeah. To me, because there's some great literature that's like, there yeah. are parts of it no, that feel poetic. There's great literature where you're like, poetry. whew, this is, well, yeah. yeah. And, and so, so then, then when, when you broaden it to all the other pieces, the mm -hmm. art, the film, the, and, and you, you, you look, look at the way language, language moves, mm -hmm. it's, it's a slippery, slippery, slippery beast. beast. It really is, because here's the problem. With language, you define things and make them less than what they are. I'll be honest. I, ro saying the word rose doesn't smell as sweet. I'll be honest. I don't read enough to describe what I've read, if that makes sense. To, I don't read enough to describe how I understand what I've read. Does that make sense? Absolutely. <laughs> Without question. I'm trying to figure, Does that actually make sense? Because... Because, like, literally, like, I know I've read a lot of stuff, and I know I understand what I understand, and it's, it's made my brain the way that it is, but I don't know that I can describe it yet. Okay. Okay. You know? okay. I think maybe. Like, you're because still... every, time, every time I try to describe it, I'm like, well, that's a piece, but that's not the whole, you know? Like, so here's what I think. I think live like that forever, and you'll never be lost. Mm-hmm. That... People often talk about reaching a point where they're not doing that, where they don't feel like they're still collecting more wisdom. I, I think the whole point of it always being practiced, that never not being practiced, is the idea that, oh my God, there's no, I don't know anything. Well, the idea. And if I don't know anything, that means every moment there's stuff I'm learning. Well, the idea is hopefully I can get good enough at understanding it that eventually I'll be able to explain some of it. Right. To where someone else can understand it, and then they could take it to a different place. You know, like, I don't want to be the end-all, be-all of anything. I don't want to, like, learn everything there is to know. Why would I want to learn that? That's boring. I, well, I don't think there's any way to learn everything there is to know. That's yeah, impossible. Of course. Think of, course. of the universe for a minute. Obviously. Think of all the information in the universe. Right. And now think of the smartest guy you know and realize he doesn't even... He doesn't even know a fraction. He doesn't even know a fraction of a fraction of that. Yeah, he doesn't even show up on the board of what you could know. Right. It's like the picture of the little blue dot where it shows us on the background of the galaxy and there's a tiny little dot with an arrow. You are here. You know what? Quit thinking. It's... It's yeah. that moment, moment when my, my ego said, said, oh, really, you, you thought the universe was fighting with you? It's literally... I think you were shadow boxing, bro. It's, it's literally just, I want to learn what I can so I can pass it on. Right. To someone else. Someone right. else I, Someone else can, can pontificate and ponder on what well, these thoughts that I told them when I, when I was younger. What I think of it as... A lot. ...is sharing my Legos. Uh -huh. That in my head, all the little bits I pick up are Legos. And I try different ways to stack them in my head, and sometimes... You go, oh my God, I didn't realize those things went together. Right. Um, but the more Legos I share, the more perspectives can play around with how they're stacked. Right. So the more people we can build a community with right. that create this, this poetry with us, this right. almost poetic thing right. that isn't about I want something from you. It's about literally trying to change a dynamic. This is what's getting me in so much trouble with the mortgage company soon. But the idea that it's important for us to share our experiences so that the other people can go, A, first off, oh wow, I share that and understand it. We don't have to constantly fight, fight over, over stupid it. crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But two, 
So that instead of hiding our Legos, mm -hmm. everybody's seeing them and trying different ways to stack them. And exactly. we're, oh my God. Exactly. I'm telling you, if I was trying to design the best possible self-replicating carbon-based quantum computer system, mm -hmm. you and me, bro? I think... I'm, no, I'm, what I'm trying to explain to you is uh -huh. we have seven and a half billion supercomputers in, on this globe right now. Uh -huh that are totally being underutilized. Yeah. That the reality is, the more we share, the more perspective, the, the more the species moves forward. Mm -hmm. The overall good mm -hmm. is far better achieved, as everybody in the financial industry knows, by following the mathematic equations of John Nash. Well, the thing is, what I have to do, what I have to do, so I have to realize that the world around me is going to continue doing this process that it's doing, which is almost like, mm -hmm. I think collectively humans are gaining knowledge, but, but that's not to say, but that's not, not to say, it. that's not to say that I have to like, no, I think, I think we're, I think we are gaining knowledge by sharing it. Like, I think there has been a lot of like, there's been a lot of human synergy in the way that we we I share think, knowledge and we gain I knowledge think we're but the momentum. thing is the thing is i think that i think Maybe. that i still have to do my best to do the same i still have to do my bit well, that's i understand so i understand that the the world around me is moving constantly but i also have to keep moving i have to do my bit so that hopefully it gets to a better place when i'm gone you know it's about raising the bar inch by inch. Well, it's about every day I get up and decide I'm going to try and do good. Every day yeah. I get to decide who I am. Right. The only place that I can exist is here. Yesterday doesn't matter. Today I have to decide who I am. Evil only wins when good stops trying. Everybody thinks they're good. No, I'm, I, I'm not. I'm just, I'm only saying that when you stop trying to achieve good, and trying to replicate good and trying to be good, I think evil wins. I think Cletus thought he was good. Cletus? He thought he was good? I don't think <laughs> It's totally good. going over your head. Do you remember who Cletus is? Good. No, I know who he is. I don't even think he thought he was good. That's true. At some point he decided he did make yeah. a, a big speech about how he was a serial killer with or without uh, carnage. Yeah, I don't yeah, I don't think he thought he was good either. Um <laughs> Watch me derail the conversation. That's okay. I've got superpowers. <laughs> but superpowers. no powers. In my opinion, in my opinion, the poetry the world moves very poetically. Yes. Yeah, that there's as much as there are times we don't like the way it's going. Yeah. Always remember the tide comes in, the tide goes out. Yeah. It does that make sense? Mm hmm That in my head it's kinda like there is a very cyclical nature. There is good there's the rise and fall of levels of suffering, maybe? Insert Circle of Life song here. Um, <laughs> anyways. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I was going to sing it, but I was like, I was like, no, I don't have that. Come on. No. Please. If I ask nicely, will you sing? Circle of Life. You're right. You should have done that. <laughs> see? See? <laughs> I told you. I told you. When are you ever going to bring your singing voice to the show, Mr. Poetry Man? When am I going to bring man? my singing voice? Yeah, Mr. Poetry Man. Uh, Mr. Poetry Man. Yo, yo, poet nerd, man. <laughs> yo, poet nerd. You cannot call me a poet nerd. Yo, poet nerd. Give me I'm some lines, bro. i Wouldn't it be funny if instead of rap being normalized, everybody walked around calling them poet nerds? Dude, like, that, Kanye that's, be there that's with how his you immediately crash in the, tape. the stock of, of, of rap music. Uh, excuse and me, poetry nerd. In the interest of me going into rap music, I would I would like you to not call me a poetry nerd. Okay, so today I'm poetry nerd. <laughs> no. <laughs> Here's a little story that I like to tell <laughs> about a poetry nerd and his trip to hell. <laughs> he was riding a bike real slow oh one gosh. day when a bunch of cool kids walked up to say. <laughs> hey, I mean, hey, I mean, yeah, poetry most, nerd. Most, 
most rappers are, are poets, so I guess you can call me a poetry nerd. But like, Kendrick Lamar got the Nobel Prize in poetry. No, he's definitely a poet. He's like, he's well, official. I think there's one of the things that's happened is there's a huge blurring of the lines of mediums. What's what? Mm-hmm. Musically, artistically, um, there's the fact that there's digital creation versus traditional mediums versus. Well, there's All so much. It. There's so much access to what everybody else is doing, so it, it makes sense that like, literally, we would. You get circles clashing. And you get, you get, more and more. You build this thing that's like, its own thing. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot. It's a lot like that. Uh, I, I was watching that Colin Quinn New York thing. It's a lot like that. You get different cultures in one city, and eventually you're going to get its own thing. New York is its own thing. Like, it comes from all these different places just the same way that, like, genres seem to be bending into this amalgamous thing mm-hmm. now. And like, I'm, I'm I, pretty I'm, cool I with love it. it. I, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, like, it's, I love the points of I like that it's. I like that it's okay for me to, like, be on a rock song now. Like... Like if I'd have done that in like the eighties, I think I, they probably would have laughed at me. I don't. I, don't I think. I, I don't. I give, think. I, I don't even give an R word pass. An R word pass. Rock. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um. We. I can't say rock. Uh, all right. Well, have you have you looked at your shade calculator? <laughs> Dude, what? Now you'll you'll have a limited run. Dude, but, what? Well, the traditional agreement is you'll have a limited run, but then you'll have to move to Man, country. Man, we it's, stop. It's called the hoodie and the blowfish Man. clause. I feel like you're I mean, only allowed to do pop rock, and then you have to go country to prove how white you are. I don't remember. I don't Not remember. Really. I don't know I don't when. Think that at all. I don't know For when. <laughs> What's your name? I like you a lot. But anyways. No, I don't. I don't know when, but I I know that at some point we stop. I think people stop caring about like a black person that does rock and is interested in rock and. Oh, well, I I think, I think we stop oh, caring absolutely. about that at some no, point. No, I yeah. I totally agree. I think that I think there was a real. First off, let me explain that there have always been black musicians. That we're in all genres. No, of course. And I mean, in the world of rock, uh, Jimmy. But anyways. Facts. Uh, so yeah, there's, that, that's not like a new tradition. But the new tradition is the idea, the relative nature. And I want to. I, I think you have to give Run DMC and Aerosmith some credit. Definitely. That taking for me, I think the most. They took the coolest pieces of both and mixed them together. It was so cool. Well, what I listen. Yeah. So a lot of rock I listen to anymore. I can. I feel like there's a lot of ways that it could intermingle. Like I listen to a lot of old songs and I go, "Wow!" If you if you did a thing with that and you vibed on those thoughts, especially like th- those songs with those six minute rants, <laughs> uh, you know. I mean, that's a lot of it. Is that there's such great. You hear the piano and some of the guitar work in those yeah. long ass songs from the early '70s and late '60s. Yeah. And I'm amazed that's not. Where yeah, half, they were they were also mean, big on instrumental breaks too. Right. Why is that not where half of the samples we hear every day coming from? That's a good point. I mean, is it just that they're they're suing everybody or it's partially that. But I think I also think like Screw that, put it out. I don't know. Why don't we have that? This is okay. Why this is there is, not Zeppelin rap? I'll be honest. This is the one one okay. Uh I really respect people that, that aren't afraid to like make what they got to make even if they're not going to make money on it. Because I'm for it. Yeah. I'm, I'm for a platform where I don't get... Okay. Instead of constant takedowns, mm-hmm. if it's good, can you just... Okay, yeah, you guys get the money so that we can still well, yeah, see yeah, the really yeah, you cool can do, stuff. You can do that. I was going to say, you can do that where, like, you can do a cover or a remix or whatever and you won't get paid for it, I, but you'll still... You'll okay. still... It's still I have a, a specific. Song. I have a specific. One thought of your in version. Mind. There's a thing that I've had trouble finding lately. What is that? That I really love, and it's the Topher Grace version of the first three Star Wars movies. Yeah, they probably got that taken down. No, it's about two hours long, uh-huh. maybe two and a half. Yeah. But it's all three movies cut. You get the entire story. It's the right way to watch it. It it really is. It it it's not as skeevy. There's less older woman eyeballing eight year old. Um, there's almost no Jar Jar. No Jar Jar? Well, because Jar Jar doesn't, yes. Jar Jar died out. If he was going to have a role, and if, if originally there was when supposed to... When did Jar Jar die? No, he didn't die, no, die. He, he just but, I mean, stopped the, appearing. Well, no, he didn't, but if there was an additional role, they never put him into it. Right. He was, all he ever went beyond was sidekick. Right. There wasn't a Jar Jar story so much. 
mm-hmm. and it felt in the first movie like there was supposed to be. But anyways, the point is, okay, I don't think Topher Grace cares whether or not he's making money off it. Maybe he did, but I think that... I say his age levels. But anyways, <laughs> that... No, he, he's a fan that produced it because he was interested in it. Why is that... Why is that not available? Mm. Disney, give that to me. I want to see it. Right, 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 right. It doesn't hurt you. Well, I think... Why is there I not... I think people I, are so... People are so money incentivized that it's hard for... It's hard for people to be able to draw the line between I'm I'm out to ride the coattails of this and I, I'm just interested in your stuff and I would like to, to make something with it. I'd like to be a part of it. Right. And I think I think I think to some extent we've gotten extensively paranoid. What about, if okay, what about if? this person is trying to steal my art, this person is trying to steal from me. Whereas it could just be this person is trying to pay homage and this person respects what if, you. What if so what if Disney had that for those, like, okay, so there's a Star Wars where people can, there's, there's a, place a place where people can put all their Star Wars stuff and then Disney can promote the ones it'd they like. It'd be cool, yeah. You know, that you, yeah, no, you're not making a ton of money off it. I don't think they would do that, but, but it'd be cool. It'd be, well, what if you did that for Star Wars, Avengers? Well, my thought is, my um, thought is Lord of the Ring. you know things what I mean? Things like that, things like that are definitely more of, like, it's, it's a way, I think that... Companies have not yet found out the way to take advantage of fully of how connected you can be to your fans. I don't know. I could be I could be completely wrong, but like it just seems like there's better ways to connect to the fan base that you have now. Well, I think that I think they end up underutilizing the fan base. Uh-huh. That they don't trust the fan base enough. Yeah. And so my thought is that there's a lot more there if you I guess like, that's why that's why I always respected like YouTubers and stuff because every once in a while they'd have like artwork from their fans that they put in their videos or they'd maybe do a do an unboxing video where they unbox things that their fans I hate unboxing them. videos. No, I hate them too. But I also Oh uh, okay relative okay I get But what I you're just saying. mean yeah. that like it, they it do feels a, like it feels like they're they're letting you be a part of their community as opposed to like, we, we would, yeah. our bit would be studio mail. I get right. what you're saying. Right. right. Oh, we got something. Let's find out what it is. Right. And then inside there's rubber dog poop. Exactly. You know? Or it rubber vomit. It doesn't matter what it is. Or, or a mask. Or it could be a beautiful... If anybody wants or, to send a mask, I know nobody's watching, but anybody tell you what, a mask. It could be a beautiful picture that you've never seen. You never know. I have, you, you know, know like... We have, we have a friend that's in Russia that's an artist. Really? Dude, we got people. Got some people. It's, it's kind of funny that I'm, I'm watching as some friends go through the part where you start to realize how connected the world is, excited about, you know what, oh, a monk, mm-hmm. you know, just reached out, you know, or so-and-so from this country, or oh, I found... It's poetry in motion, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, the, the point of the morning show is that you can, in our world, you can reach out and tap people on the shoulder. Right. You can literally... I mean, and they can be all the way around the world. Right. I, I can go to a class mm-hmm. literally halfway around the world. So I, I do a class once a week, alternating Saturdays and Sundays in Vietnam. Mm. Not that I'm leaving my chair. Right. But, and then the coolest part is, the most poetic part, if you will, is you begin to see all of the connections. Because you show up to this thing, you're, you're in a Zoom meeting, and the entire world is represented. Right. There's 40, 50 people in there mm-hmm. from everywhere just coming together going, you know what, yeah, compassion. Right. We believe in this thing. You guys meditate in there too? Um, yeah, some. Like, uh, so Guru was present, and so Guru uh, ranked, read some of the Sanskrit or anyways, read to us from the traditional texts. And you know, it's more of a, it's not like when he's speaking, it's not like I know that. Right. So I close, but now I close my eyes and meditate on it. More like it's, I'm listening to. You're listening to um, it, closing eyes the sound. Yeah. yeah. But we are actually, I'm, I'm working on a group that has a lot of those interests. Ross will be there as well, just because we need somebody to produce it. And he's fun. And he's 18. And he gives a really cool outlook. But, that 
it, it really is a figuring out how to make all of those pieces feel real cohesive yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, there's there's a there's a there's a joy it's an amazing thing when you're in a group even if it's on zoom you you can get that sense of or on the podcast or our goal is to bring a lot of that to you i think we're both working really really hard at making sure that when people encounter us everything feels like this is supposed to this is supposed to be like this this is how this is supposed to be mm-hmm. and it, it it makes sense it just it just flows you go from here to here and and you listen to this and you hear that or you look at this and I don't want it to ever feel forced. And I think I think I think we both work really hard at making sure it doesn't feel forced and it doesn't feel well, fake. The one aspect that we're both very serious about is the idea of okay, we're not putting on a show. Yeah. I, I know that sounds counterintuitive. Yeah. But it's based on the teachings of H. Stern from the shock rock genre. <laughs> That H the reality is that you want to create an environment where people feel like it's real and they are a part of it. Yeah. That they exist in, not only that you exist in their universe, but, but they, they exist, exist in, in yours. Universe, because, yeah. so as we're talking about the group coming up, one of the dynamics is that there's more people. Mm-hmm. But I think it's a very real aspect and that has been explored now on a bunch of talk shows on TV as well as as Mr. Stern showed you know if, if you bring the the car crash everybody will watch right <laughs> well but to some extent that's well I think I think we have to get past the car crash well no my that's point is exciting. that people are interested in the reality of life yeah, yeah. They, they all this what they relate to is a shared experience when you talk about publicly the really real goings on mm. amongst people people are like oh yeah it's, I think it's Seinfeld, Seinfeld made his whole act out of it, noticing it's, things. It's most of the positivity that I want to like. Yeah. I want to see. I want to like. When you say when you say car crash, it makes me think. Okay. Oh, okay. negative. No, it made me think negative at first, but when you when you like elaborated on it, I was like, okay, no, he means like reality. Yeah. So I want I want the positive. I want us to like. Give off the positive aspect. Ooh, of you, know reality, you know what? Well, I mean, we're going to go the negative too. Trust me. Everybody should go back and watch the episode but, The Flood. Yeah. Watch, watch the episode yeah, the, flood. the Flood. And if you want to understand, like, wow, not great thing happens, and then you're on cloud nine because you take a totally different perspective on it. Yeah. And instead of getting upset, you you're like with it. having a good time cleaning up a holy hell mess. With friends and laughing, and it, we. This this is my big push. Go find on Spotify or YouTube, Studio 586B. Where's the line? The flood. I could try and tell you what day it was. I'm gonna tell you it was in February, and you know what? That means sometime. You know what? In the end, I say that it might have been January. But anyways. It might have been January. I really don't know. I. You know what? The trick is. At this point, it's somewhere in there. But the flood will get you there. Yeah. The, the flood, flood will get, get you there. there. The flood we will go. get you there, yeah. Yes, that's, that's what, what she said. said. Mm-hmm. It's almost poetic. It's almost poetic. Right? You're poetic. We should write we should write something called almost poetic. Almost, almost poetic. poetic. Really yeah. just almost <laughs> rhymes. It's yeah. off by just, just enough. enough. Yeah. To just to enough. like make it uncomfortable. Now, now that we've, we've described our described our whole style. style. Yep. yep. Off <laughs> by just <laughs> enough. Off by just enough. Off by just enough. That is us though. Who's watching? That's me. I know who's watching. <laughs> <laughs> Show us up yet. Yeah.